Welcome back to the Press Rewind Prince Lyrics Podcast. We are now up to the B-side to Purple Rain. The song's title is God, or as I like to call it, How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love My Spiritual Side by Prince. (laughs) So the Purple Rain era singles are known not only for their status as some of the most beloved and well-known songs in Prince's career, they're also known for their B-sides. 17 Days in Erotic City are just two of the best examples uh, of this, and they're often cited as not only that, just being well-known songs, but amazing examples of a songwriter's cup having runneth over. Another Lonely Christmas is yet another memorable B-side from this era, due to its uh, tragic lyrics and you know the story that Prince tells about a lover having passed on Christmas. Very dramatic. We'll get to that song soon. But now we have God. And as I mentioned, God is the the B-side, the flip side to the mega hit title track, Purple Rain. So maybe you're thinking like, what do you put on the opposite side of a song as enormous as Purple Rain, as meaningful as Purple Rain is to the, the movie, the album, and Prince's career? Well, how about uh, four minutes of stark instrumentals and a very overtly Christian lyrical content? (laughs) The song is called God, after all. I I don't think that there's any, really any kind of um, mistaking what this song is, is meant to be about or what its intentions are. Prince was not playing coy at this point in his career like he had been. God also has another life as an alternate instrumental track known as the love theme to Purple Rain. That is the the title of the song in parentheses, God, the love theme to Purple Rain. So that version of the song is instrumental. It has, um, you know, you're kind of familiar with it if you watch the movie and you get to that scene being played in the background, the music being played in the background of Prince and Apollonia's love scene. (laughs) You know the one. Yeah, you know that scene. So that's that's a piece, just a little bit of the instrumental of God. And um, it also has a very interesting and memorable guitar solo in that. There's a lot of guitar in the instrumental version that we don't get in what is what I'm going to be talking about. So what I'm talking about is not the instrumental version. What I'm talking about is the the four minute vocal version that's on the flip side to to purple rain and in this song it uh, overtly places prince's spirituality front and center intentions that were once cloaked and coded in metaphors and catchy choruses on songs like let's go crazy and i would die for you are now completely naked and I mean that almost literally. The, the vocals Prince puts on this song are nearly naked in many cases, like very stark instrumental. And it's, it's, a, it's a very vocal-driven song. So Prince had no qualms with using his sexuality and his body to grab attention early on in his career. But now it was time to put his spirituality out there, his, his religion out there. No more metaphors, no more parables, no more questions or controversies about whether or not Prince was religious, did he believe in God. The title and the lyrics to the song prove that he was. And it really kind of paved the way and gave Prince a a touchstone for any future songs about spirituality and religion where he was going to be overt about it. A song like Temptation, or even the latter off of Around the World in a Day, his very next album. This was kind of like the gate being opened, allowing him maybe some freedoms to express these beliefs and express this part of him in a way that he had never done before didn't feel comfortable doing maybe felt like you know it it was a bad career move but once he put god on the on the 
B-side to Purple Rain, a song that so many people bought and so many people listened to. I think at that point, that was Prince's moment to really express that side of himself and make it very clear that this was a part of him that wasn't going away. It wasn't really just a phase. It never, it never really was. I mean, he, he included songs of this nature, maybe not, you know, quite like this, at least not delivered quite like this until maybe uh, the Rainbow Children era. But this was, this was a bold statement, even if it was just a B-side. Its placement as the Purple Rain B-side was going to ensure that God was listened to by a lot of people, maybe could take or leave religion, discussions about God. It could have probably even turned some people off. They may not have necessarily even enjoyed the song. And, I mean, it's kind of a polarizing song, not just because of the lyrical content. The delivery also is polarizing. I, I could see my own 9- or 10-year-old self in 84, 85. If I would have had this 45, I didn't. But if I had it, or knew anybody that had it, if I would have flipped it over, played God for myself, I'm pretty sure I would have been unimpressed. It mostly, I would say, because of the music and the lack of instrumentation, the lack of a chorus, the lack of a narrative. It just feel, felt like Bible school in some ways. It felt like it was just being some very basic, rudimentary theologies were being placed on a on a pop song, but this this was not a pop song. But it's not it's not really a gospel song either. Like gospel songs tend to be more upbeat. At least those the gospel songs that that I had heard. So I don't know how to really kind of categorize this song. I mean it's slow like a ballad in many ways, so it fits the tone of you know, Purple Rain for that reason, but, I mean, maybe it's a ballad to God, or about God. Love for God, instead of love for another person, or love for a woman, it's love for God, which I guess makes it a ballad. So Prince begins the song by incorporating some some vocal gymnastics, and I had read on a Diffuser article written by uh, the author Mike Joseph back in June 2017 that he described these noises that Prince was making and the screaming coming out of Prince's mouth at the beginning of the song as kind of like a quote-unquote speaking in tongues. And I, I found that interesting that the use of that term to describe what Prince does in the beginning of the song just because I hadn't thought of that personally I don't think too often about speaking in tongues. It's not a it's not a concept that I spend a lot of time thinking about. So for him to to liken that portion of the song and how Prince delivers uh his vocals, which are unintelligible. There's no there's no words being spoken here, just like, you know, speaking in tongues. But um it's it's all about it's all about the delivery, as I've mentioned before, the delivery of the lines. It kind of makes me makes me wonder, like, is Prince trying to express a spiritual awakening without using words? I mean, that's that's personally kind of what I get out of it, I guess. Like, he's experienced this, this spiritual awakening and maybe some joy. Maybe there's there's some joy coming out of him. And it's um, inexpressible through the English language, through normal means of communication. So he's just expressing it in this very um, garbled, very guttural, very primitive manner. Uh, no matter what you think about it, it it's still a, it's an odd choice to open a song. I mean, I don't think that's super debatable there. I think most people who listen to God, would agree that opening the song that way is is definitely an odd choice. 
but it, it kind of reminds us that um, this is not going to be Purple Rain 2. It's not going to be like, here's uh, here's me expanding on the thoughts and ideas that I sang on Purple Rain on the A side. No. And uh, it's definitely not going to be like a typical gospel entry. Like a song like God, you might have preconceived notions about what this is going to sound like based off of maybe your history with gospel music. Maybe your history with um, going to church, attending church, and hearing those kinds of songs that were being sung in any kind of like any kind of Christian ceremony, y- you might have an idea. But I don't know if anybody could really predict what what ends up coming out of the speakers once you press play or put the needle down on the record. It's really it's really quite jarring what we're getting here. I mean, the song is all about atmosphere, and it's it's really just about the vocals. So even if the song doesn't have a ton of lyrics, which it doesn't, I think Prince is trying to send a message to us all. He is a believer. He wants us to know that. He wants to make that very clear. In the beginning, there was God. He made the earth and the heavens. He gave us light to rule the day. And another light to rule the night. So he's kind of going Old Testament here, this first verse. Telling us that there was God in the beginning and God made the heavens and earth. I mean, this is something that if you grow up in any kind of uh, Christian faith, you're going to be taught this. This is something that is taught early, early on. The light to rule the day, another light to rule the night can be a reference to, of course, the sun and the moon basically giving reference to our entire solar system not just what we see here on the planet earth but everything comes from god the next verse the lord thy god made he made the seas he made the fruit upon the trees when he saw when he saw that it was good he made a man made a man Only he could. Only he could. God made you. God made me too. He made us all. Made us all equally. It's at this point that Prince is really telling the story of of Genesis from the Bible. That's essentially what he's doing with these lyrics. The seas, the, the trees, us. And uh, he was pleased with with his creations made man in his own image that's what we're that's what we're to believe god made you god made me too and he made us all equally which of course has other other connotations i mean you tell somebody that god made us all and he made us all equally it's also speaking about racism and believing like you know making sure that that is that is driven home, that point is driven home, that if God made us all equally, then what are we fighting for? What are we really trying to show when we're saying one race is better or superior than another? That uh, it's all our own creation. That's that's a man-made thing because God didn't make us different. He made us equal. And we've taken it upon ourselves to create this division amongst us based off of where we're from and what we look like. And only he could make us. That's what's being said here. Only he could do this. So, you know, we're we're pretty clearly given direction on which way Prince believes creation versus evolution I think that's pretty clear here. He made us all, and only he could do it. So he answers any questions there about his belief system and how we ended up on this planet. He wants to repeat that portion of this. and It's almost like if you could call anything a chorus in this song, it would be the God made you, God made me. He made us all equally because... That's really the only lines that he repeats in the song. 
and because he isolates those those lines it is the closest we get to a chorus and because he chose those lines to repeat I think he really wanted us the listener to take that point home with us even if we don't really get anything else out of this song because we're not necessarily very religious ourselves or we think the message is pretty basic he wanted to make sure that at least if we took nothing else out of this the god made you god made me he made us all equally i think is a a smart way to grab the audience that you have thanks to the enormous successes he was seeing in 1984 and put a song out there that um that really spoke to his belief system and, and spoke to what he felt was really important message to get across and yeah the whole i believe in god message is important to him but so is the the quality message we're all equal and uh racism itself is a, is a human evil it's something that was never intended intended by god to exist based off of how he made us like if if the belief is that you know and a lot of racists have this belief i feel is we're not created equal i mean that's the whole crux of racism is that one believes that they're superior to another race of of human beings and that if they're of a christian faith then then they would have to believe that god did not make us all equally and prince is really just trying to debunk that that theory that people that some races racists have is that we're not all created equally towards the end of the song he has a few more lines that he states as the song is starting to fade out that i find interesting the, the lines are wake up children dance the dance electric there isn't much time who screamed was it you so the i think most of us at this point are going to really call out one of the first things that we recognize here is the mention of the dance electric so in 1984 and this is kind of an interesting interesting piece of, of um, recording history that I that I gathered from the Prince Vault was that the song Prince's version of the song Dance Electric because that is a song that Prince recorded never released it officially himself it ended up getting released on the Purple Rain Deluxe Edition that was um, that was issued in 2017 up until that point it had its uh, lifespan was a, a an andre simone song andre simone of course was a former bandmate of prince's that left around 1980 81 was replaced by uh, mark brown also known as brown mark on bass so you know he and prince were friends growing up they started out together in, in local bands in, in Minneapolis. Prince went off to L.A. to do his solo thing, came back, uh, scooped Andre up to be a part of his, his touring band in 79. You know, and they stayed together as, as bandmates for a couple years until Andre really felt like he he needed to spread his own wings and, and go solo. There was, a, you know, there's been books written about, you know, their relationship and maybe some of the things that transpired and went down between the two of them but at the end of the day they were they were childhood friends and and how the story goes is that is that andre's mother had called on prince to provide her son a song to write a song song for andre at this point andre had already released two solo albums and he was working on his third when apparently this um this plea from andre's mother to prince to provide her son a song and i i forget the the reasons why she even did that in the first place I, i'm pretty sure i read it somewhere but i don't i don't recall exactly why but nevertheless she, she apparently did and prince had recorded dance electric on august 17th 1984 his version two days later according to prince vault two days later 
on August 19th, 1984, he recorded this vocal version of God. So yeah, I just I just found that interesting that you know Prince was recording both the Dance Electric and God within days of each other. So he obviously had the idea in his brain about dancing the Dance Electric. And basically what I can gather from you know the lyrics to the song the Dance Electric is that it kind of refers to like this once again like an apocalyptic style um event that's happening like he mentions there isn't much time in god and and in the song the dance electric lyrics are you know referencing apocalypse and it's almost time to go and the world is falling love your enemies there isn't much time so this idea of time running out and it's 1984 prince prince had already kind of kind of did this in 1999 two years prior so he's really still kind of stuck on this idea of time running out. And that manifests itself into the song and the lyrics of Dance Electric. But the since the idea was still so fresh in his brain, having just recorded that song like two days prior, he still felt like he needed to throw, or felt compelled to throw those, another reference to the Dance Electric, this, this concept of the Dance Electric being like an end of times event, something that people are doing in preparation for the end of times, or maybe a celebration to of, of people of faith that realize like we're going to a better world. We're we're going to be uh, even though the, the the world is ending and and we're about to die. There's I guess some odd joy to that because we feel like we're all going to be together in the afterlife in heaven so I, I just felt like i had to mention that the mention of the word dance electric because of how close the two songs were written andre simone's version ended up coming out in 85 on his third album ac so really like astute listeners of prince and and maybe some of the folks that he had been working with in the past. Like if I if I was right there on you know, the day it was released buying Purple Rain, I flipped over God and I paid attention to the lyrics and heard the Dan's Electric. And then I buy A C Andre Simone's eighty five album and I put on the record and I hear the Dan's Electric, I'm gonna make that connection and I'm gonna see like, oh yeah, this was co written by Prince. It's like the only time that Prince and Andre had worked together to to write a song on any of Andre's solo work. It's the one and only time. The Who Screamed, Was It You? I think that is interesting. Um, you know, I mean, I guess you can kind of look at it from the standpoint that we're saying, he's saying there isn't much time. Wake up, children, there isn't much time. We have to dance the dance electric, which is maybe also another code for ask for forgiveness or, you know, uh, be ready. You know, spiritually be ready, not necessarily just physically be ready, but get your house in order from the standpoint of uh, get your get your soul right. And who screamed? Was it you? It's it's a little it's a little uh, dark, I guess. A little a little foreboding of a of a message there. Who screamed? I guess if I'm listening to the song and I'm thinking he's talking about there isn't much time and somebody screams, that kind of tells me the listener that maybe. That's, you know, the end of the song is the end of the world. And he's he's just now seeing destruction around him and wants to know who who's screaming, who's the one who's dying. Maybe that's a very literal take on it. I think it would be kind of cool to hear some other takes, but that is that is a very literal way to take that those lines. Somebody's dying. Who screamed? Was it you? Or again... If you take it back to the beginning of the song where Prince screams and he's speaking in tongues, if one is to believe that, maybe he's hearing somebody else do the same thing. Maybe it kind of goes, it's, it's a circular thought, potentially. He starts it off screaming because he's found God and is expressing that, but maybe also now he's realizing there's others around him that are doing the same thing. And he's curious. He wants to know who else has found God. God's an interesting song. Uh, 
you know, I, I think it's it's quirky. It's uh, it, it definitely sticks with you if you hear it. Maybe not in a, a way where you're going to be humming it, as you might with you know Purple Rain or When Doves Cry or Little Red Corvette or Let's Go Crazy. I mean, like all those big hits are big hits for a reason. They're memorable. They have great choruses. Musically, they're interesting. If God sticks with you, it sticks with you for an entirely different reason. It sticks with you because it's it's so different. It's so, and I've said this before, odd. I don't really know how else to explain it. It's it's an odd fucking song, and it sticks with you for that reason. Is it a song I'm gonna put on and play whenever I want my Prince fix? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Is a song I play when um, you know I I kind of want to get and be reminded of some of the more like really out there messages that Prince was doing at this time. I mean, he could have done anything on the backside of Purple Rain. He could have put, you know, a really funky two or three minute jam, a rock song. He could have done another like pseudo ballad, but he chose to, to write and record and release a song called God. That sounds like this. Kudos to you, Prince, because, uh, this had to leave a lot of people scratching their heads. I'm certain that a lot of people were scratching their heads after listening to the song for the first time, or the tenth time, or the hundredth time. It leaves me scratching my head, which I guess makes it memorable, right? If you don't really know what the hell you just listened to, that's a form of of being memorable. That's a form of of uniqueness. So this has been the Press Rewind Prince Lyrics Podcast. I've been your host, Jason Brenager. Thanks again for listening. If you enjoy the show, feel free to jump on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify. However you listen to my show, I'd love to uh, hear from you. I'd love to read your interpretation of God, how this song in particular really kind of speaks to you, if it speaks to you at all. I would love to hear what you have to say about it because um, I think it's a song that really really can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, even if the lyrics aren't necessarily saying anything profound or anything that we haven't heard before, especially if you are um, you know have faith, spirituality, religious in any sort of way. This is not a new kind of interpretation of the Bible that we're hearing here. So I I would just be curious to know what you guys think about God. You can get a hold of me at PressRewind75 on Twitter, Instagram. I have a Facebook page called Press Rewind Prince Lyrics Podcast. And until next time, goodbye.